Hello and welcome to Wally Bois. Well, in this video, we're going to peen our sickle and sharpen it to make it sharp so it can cut stuff. It seems like a really good idea to me. After all, that's what it's for. But I hear you say you was peening. Oh, well, I don't think I really want to explain it. So I'm going to have to show you what peening is. Well, this is a sickle. And a sickle requires peening and sharpening. As you use it, because you use it to cut grass, and you, you might hit things that aren't that great for the, well, the edge of the blade. And plus they, well, they get blunt. So you have to sharpen them. But every time you sharpen, you're going to rec reduce the width of the blade. It's going to get thinner across the width of the blade. And this material here is thicker than that material. So you have to do a thing called peening. And it's actually quite easy to do. Now you can get a special peening anvil. Mm -hmm. Something you chuck on the top of a log so you can peen it. And it gives you a bit of a, what you call a fox edge. Now, that's all very well. But not everybody's got one of them anvils, no. And I haven't either. I had this thing I was using before. A little five kilo anvil, which isn't very good for peening. It's actually quite terrible for peening, in fact. So I got myself... Well, in fact, I made myself, because I do like to make the odd tool or two. I made myself this thing, yeah. This little 10 kilo peening anvil. I forged it all myself, I did. Uh, actually, no, it's a, it's a sledgehammer head. Yeah, a big one like that one. Yeah, this is a smaller one. So I chose the bigger one. And I made it in this block. And believe you me, it was a nightmare to cut that flipping hole for that to sit in. Because it's quite deep, you see. It goes away down here. This does. It's quite big. Yeah. But I did it. And we put a big bolt through. And it holds it all in the place. And I've made a video. Which I hope to leave a card up here somewhere once. I've edited the video. And I've got it online. It might already be online when you're watching this video. Okay. So anyway, I've got myself. I made myself a little peening um, anvil. Now... Let's be fair, it doesn't have to be one that you've made. You might have an old sledgehammer, you could use that as your peening anvil. Just mount it onto something so it doesn't move about, or stick it in the vice. Something like that, anyway. It's up to you. But anyway, this is my peening anvil. Now what peening does, it draws material from the stock of the blade to the edge. And you can use that to fill any lows and highs that might be in the blade. But also, you can use it as a way of repairing the blade as well. If you've got a little crack forming, you can draw material into it and actually literally remove that crack that's forming. The start of a little tear or something in the edge of your blade. Which isn't very good. No, don't want that. No. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw material to the edge of this blade where the lows are. Because the when you're sharpening one of these things, because of the shape of it, you tend, you're sharpening it with something that's not flat and because it's not flat what can happen is you end up with like lows and highs and stuff like that so because you're using something round like that or you might be using these diamond sharpens which i tend to use um but you don't have a lot of choice because look at the shape of it you're not going to sharpen that with something that's flat no not at all no because your sharpener end up the shape of that <laughs> that won't be very helpful no so what we have to do is we have to make allowances. So we make alterations to the blade for any uh, indiscrepancies that have been caused by regular sharpening. Because you have to sharpen it regular because you want to keep it sharp. Because you've got to sharpen it. Otherwise it won't cut. Yeah. Anyway, there's no point concentrating on this area here of the blade. Because you, don't, you shouldn't really be using this part of the blade really. It's this area from here to there that has to be really, really sharp. So um, there's no point removing material that you don't need to. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to peen with our paint, ball paint hammer, um, this edge. So we're going to literally draw material across to the edge to, to make that edge a bit thinner so we can actually sharpen it. Otherwise, you have to be trying to sharpen a thick edge and you cannot get such a good edge on a thick edge. Yeah. Thick people are not as sharp. No. Okay, let's, let's get on with it, shall we? <laughs> Literally, I'm doing a stroking motion, so I'm not going bang, 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 bang. Um, it's a circular motion, sort of drawing material to the edge. Now, 
Now, you'll keep an eye on it to make sure you're not causing damage. Um, this is a forged uh, sickle. Um, you might have a well, you might have a sheet steel one that's got like a little bend in it to keep it stiff and stuff. It's a modern one. It's not going to be like this. This is a hand forged one. If you can get hold of one of these old ones, do it because they're lovely. That they are. I like it anyway. It's a good tool. Um, if it's a scythe, it have a much longer blade and a straighter blade. Um, a hand scythe, you know, will have obviously a short blade, but it'll be straighter. Now, this is a different thing altogether, really. For a different, different job. Oh, wrong way up. <laughs> Nearly. So always do it from the top of the blade. So the top of the blade, in this case, is where this forged in reinforcement, like a like a back saw has. Yes, I'm a woodworker. So there you go. So what you don't want to do is leave this too long and think, oh, I can't be bothered, can't be bothered. And all of a sudden you've done a hundred sharpens and you wonder why you've got a really thick edge um, because you haven't done it regular. Just do a little bit of peening, but do it often. Well, I say often, maybe every 10 to 15 sharpens, but a light peening. That's kind of what I'm doing here. Now where you got the lows and the steel, you use that, you do a bit more work in that area and that'll draw more material to the edge. So I'm quite happy at that. Yeah. So we've peened that edge now, so drawing material up. It's still got a little bit of flat there, but I, I can live with that. Probably come out with sharpening anyway. So this is my um, peening anvil made from an old sledgehammer head. I had a broken handle. So now what we've got to do is we've got to sharpen it. I've got to hone that edge. Now, although it is quite sharp actually already, and I've already managed to cut myself with it. Yeah, uh, there. Yeah, not a great idea. Don't do that, because it hurts. So what we need to do now is, is create this uh, an edge, a burr. So we're going to create a burr for which we're going to remove and hone. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to use my belly, because I've got, I've got plenty of it, and I use that to hold the handle. So the blade's pointing away from you, like so. You don't want to do it in a way so it's going to end up cutting you in any direction. No, not great. And don't do it like that, because that's a really stupid idea, and I don't know why I'm doing it to show you, even. Because it's still a very stupid idea. Now, you'll have these stones. You might have this kind of stone. I don't like them, personally. Uh, I know lots of people use them, but I'm not a great lover. This is actually quite a nice one. But um, they should be soaked in water. Now, generally what you would have is a uh, either carved horn... <laughs> well, it's, just, it's like a wooden thing. You put a bit of water in, and then you have your. Um, in this case, this is what you call a canoe stone, or you might have a cigar stone, which is which is perfectly round with tape, with sort of a weird tape, a cigar shape, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but this is a canoe stone. This was reasonably fine, but I don't think it's fine enough. There's another canoe stone, another one I've broken half. This is what happens to them. Um, and then you want something to lubricate your stone water. Generally, I'm just going to use a bit of wind lane on there for the moment, and I like to. Use that stone and you do a bit of a sweeping action, but you're pulling away from the blade as you do it. Don't go along with the blade because you'll end up slicing yourself. With a hook blade like this, you're more likely to cut yourself. With a straight blade, you're less likely because you can do more of a more of a sweep. But with this, you must do it from the wrist. Otherwise, you will cut yourself and it will hurt and you will bleed. It's not a great idea. No, don't do it. You do this kind of motion here. So bring in the blade, bring in the blade, bring in the the stone away from the blade as you do it like so and while you're doing this you create a burr in one direction so you need to remove that and you do it in the opposite direction with your stone now i like to use what i like to use are these things and um, yet again you need some liquid i, I tend to use water and windoline a lot actually for my lubrication but if i'm if i was using these stones all the time i would be using so i'll be soaking it and if you haven't managed to carve yourself out a little reservoir to keep your stone in one idea is oh it gives me a light my light's back on <laughs> it's one of these yeah it's a water bowl all you need to do is cut it off around here put a slot in it for your belt or a bit of rope to go through and it's that way up and literally what you do is you dunk your stone in there while you work with a little bit of water in the bottom 
and then you get wet groin. Don't do uh, it. Don't, no, don't do it, get wet groin, I don't care. <laughs> you might like it. So anyway, then I use a diamond stone like this one. This one's a bit coarse, this one. But you're pulling away as you do it. You know, you're using a wrist motion, not an arm motion. So sweeping away from the blade, remembering that blade, that blade is a hook. Um, I've got another one here that I use. It's more warm, which actually is better because it's because it's more warm. It's fine, it's finer. So it's not not so coarse. Now, if you use your your uh, sickle on a regular basis, you should be doing your sharpening on a regular basis. If you probably sh you, sh you, sh you sharpen it as you go, effectively. You do a few swipes and a couple of swipes with a sharpener, then you carry on a few swipes to your grass, and you keep doing that. Otherwise, what you end up happening is you end up with a lot of sharpening that need to be done, and that's just like more work than you really want to be doing. So, sweep motion away from the blade until you're satisfied, you're correct. Oh, yeah. Now, I'd like to see whether I can shave my hair. Nearly. It's tugging a little bit, so it's not as sharp as I'd like. Ooh, yeah. Be careful you're not creating a skin graft, but that's definitely, yeah, it's definitely shaving, but not as not as well as I would like as yet. So I put on the belly like that. That way around. And I've seen a lot of people use these coarse old stones like this. I must put a right old jagged edge on. You, you need three grits. If you can use those stones, you need three of them. You need one to put your main, um, to fit your, fit your primary grinder, and you need another one to create your, uh, your micro bevel. And if you've got a folded over burr, because that's what you're just going to do with a coarse old stone, you'll create a big old burr and you'll fold it over, and it's never going to get sharp until you remove that burr. I'm really nervous to I think I'll cut myself. I don't want to cut myself, especially on the video, because it'll be like gore. There you go, I think that's it. I'm quite happy with that. There you go. Now you sharpen both sort of edges of the blade on a sickle. Not just one not just one edge like you would do on a uh lawnmower blade or something like that, or a plain iron. Oh, that's quite sharp. Yeah, well, yes, it is. Yep, there you go. It's, it's, you poke up. You might not. It's, you might be able to see it. I can't talk properly though. But can you see that here? <laughs> probably not. Anyway, I've, I've definitely got a ball patch just there. You can see it. Just, you can see it just there. I just shaved my hair. Oh, careful! I'll sort of sideways. Yeah, definitely. Ow! <laughs> Not quite a razor sharp, but sharp enough to, to shave. That's sharp enough to cut grass. Like I say, regularly sharpen and regularly pain, peen, sorry. Um, you don't have to peen as often as you do sharpen. And generally speaking, you keep an eye on the edge. And say, mm, that needs peening. Yeah, I'd say that needs a bit of bringing material out there. Yeah, okay. Always a bit of a split in there. Get the file on, sort it out, and peen it back into shape. And then you can... Um, do your final honings that way. And like I said, I've used this old thing here, which is an old sledgehammer head. Yeah, and it works. So, that is how I peen and sharpen my hand sickle. It's easy, and it's very similar to what you need to do with a scythe as well. Or even a billock, like so. Oh, okay. Anyway, don't forget to click like and subscribe, and maybe a little bell icon, because then you get one fussy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. Oh, and also, why not check out our merchandise store? Links are down in the description. We do woodworky type t-shirts, funny ones too. Okay. Ta-ta. Oh, where's my remote?